son. Well, <laughs> too where's <late>. the feds? <laughs> what, what do I have? Uh, I wear my glasses, maybe. I don't know. Something to give you character. I, I think you're. I think you're good. Uh, I, think, I think, uh, yeah, you're 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 Kevin Nash. <laughs> that's that's you what you, that's what you bring. <laughs> that's that's it. Yeah, it's enough. Uh, it is enough. It's absolutely uh, enough. You so we've uh, got... you, still, you still in Florida? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, you know down here we don't have COVID. No, I heard that. That's so great. <laughs> yeah, it's unbelievable. Your governor figured that out. I, I, it's, I, it's, it's, you know, it's the 70, 70 IQ mouth breathing crew. Wow. It's terrifying. It's unbelievable. We, we're, we're basically, I feel like it, it's like, uh, though I've never watched the show, like Walking Dead. Like we're in like, yeah. like yeah. We're, in, we're stuck in our house and we've got, we go out and get provisions and hope we survive. Yeah. Exactly. And that people don't like roll up on you. Well, I mean, it's, we're the only people without a pickup truck, so we're, we're in trouble. So was that, was that, was that a hint of what you want for Christmas? No, I, I, I just, I'm stunned at these commercials that they're running constantly during all the football games of people giving other people cars for Christmas. Oh, yeah. Like, what do you, do you know what's going on? Like, what, what are you guys thinking? Nobody's giving anybody a car for Christmas. They're no, like, about, they can't feed themselves. As I said, but we'll go, to, go to Fort Worth and maybe hand out some food in that seven hour line that was there yesterday. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just like. No, it's crazy. There's this whole, watching commercials now, there's this whole kind of weird disconnect. Like they're, they're, some of the commercials address what's going on, but half of them don't. And so they exist in this like fantasy world, you know, of, of I don't know, five years from now or two years ago. And it's so strange. I like the fact that now that we have a vaccine that it's like, well, well things will be back to normal by January 1st. I know. I'm like, there's, they, they got like seven, seven vials. Yeah. You know, it's like. It's going to take a while. Um, yeah. And they need a, a big, time. and they need, look, they, they need a big PR campaign to convince people to take this. They really do. They need to get, they need to get some people that have the public trust and get them to, to participate in a campaign to to convince people to take the vaccine or this is going to go on a That's lot right. longer if, like, what you have to, what you have to do is you've got to find a-list celebrities and athletes that have everything on earth to lose i think yeah. i think athletes is the way to go i think that's what i do too do. because think, they because they had to play through the pandemic like they they put themselves out there and and they played through it and nobody i think has more credibility right now than they do like i yeah. I, I still can't believe college sports this is stunning to me because they get nothing nothing kids. they get nothing for for risking their lives to to have like you know the the cbs sec deal pay out this year right so anyway that's not what we're talking i just no. want to you know what i'm tempted just to not say a word for the next hour and just let that go no i want your first of all i hope that cat talks this is my prop nash wanted the fez oh. i brought my uh my rescue kitten i actually mm -hmm. he's doing this of his own free volition yeah i'm um, super happy to have him that's what's Tommy, he's here. Here. Yeah. yeah he's uh f for once um let's welcome everybody here guys thank you for being a part of this this evening for those of you who have just joined in this is our fireside chat sponsored by singani 63 featuring oscar winning director steven soderbergh and magic mike star and wwe hall of famer kevin nash we are here to talk about drinking 
drinking Singani and uh, drinking Singani while uh, on the set of Magic Mike. Uh, <laughs> This is a very special evening for those of you who are here. We kept it small for a reason. And um, I'm not really going to spend too much of the evening talking about Singani or, you know, doing a lot of background on Singani. If you don't have a bottle of Singani, uh, you need to get one. And if you don't have a Singani cocktail in your hand, you need to make one. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, you, you, uh, put, you put pressure on me. I'm going to make a cocktail. Mm. I thought you'd already. I thought you already were, were uh, a few deep. So we're gonna cut you some slack. <laughs> I'm gonna just jump right into this because I just want to get the question yeah. started because there's so much gold here to mine. I know it. Nash, I'm gonna ask you the first question of the evening. Um, I know that you are primarily a wine drinker, and you are definitely concerned about your health uh, as somebody who's a professional athlete. When you were prepping for Magic Mike, I think you were eating nothing but chicken breasts and yams. And then you finally get to cut loose. You've, you've filmed all the scenes that you need to film where your shirt is off and your muscles are rippling. Um, what are your thoughts when director Steven Soderbergh comes up to you with this bottle and says, here, try this? Well, first, actually, we, um, uh, Steven had, of course, he, he, he shot uh everything in sequence and then edited every night so uh every night that we we if, if we wanted to we could come down and we could watch five days of the film we could watch 10 days and so this evening I, if i'm not mistaken steve can correct me but i think this was the night that we pretty much we only had to go back and shoot a, like a couple of pickups like i think the the scene with 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 uh, richie um where uh, Joe hooked up, yeah. I think that that was our sh that was our shot the next day, right? And then, and then shortly after that, we we were, we were on our way to Myrtle Beach for the for the final shoot. Mm -hmm. And uh, so um, Stephen and, and and Greg both they had the, uh, I think they had a case of Camus if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. It was like a, there was like there was there was plenty of wine first. So I started out drinking wine and then slowly you know the guys started to so it ended up just being uh steven and i and we had made plans we thought all of us to watch team america and well when it came down to it i, I, I said to steven i said you know do you think i could have a little bit of the singati he said of course and um and it was know, me and kevin yeah, unless you know, you it was real. It's a you know, it was real. It was a funny evening. First of all, you know, uh, you may ask why Team America, and and let me answer first by saying it's a masterpiece. That's why. Secondly, it it's it's I've I've used it on occasion strategically because it's just such. If you can get a group of people together that you're working with to watch it together. It's such a unifying uh, experience because it's so insane. And, you know, what was interesting was at a certain point in the evening, it was only Kevin. And, and I have to say, looking back, you know, I wonder why these other people couldn't make the sacrifice um, and, and the commitment that Kevin and I did. Uh, it's really, you know, it's disheartening. Um, but we, we, we stayed and, um, you know, I have to, people ask all the time, well, you, you have connections to the entertainment industry. You should be using those, you know, to help build your brand out. And I feel like that's not, I have friends. They wouldn't be my friends if I started to ask them to like shill for me like that's you can't do that so i you know this developed out of a kind of organic situation um because i would never want to put somebody in the awkward position of having to do me a favor like that that really doesn't have anything to do with the movie business i would ask anybody to do me a favor if it meant like a movie getting made or something but this is not that, and I feel crossing the streams. Um, you know, you you shouldn't do that. 
Well, that's what I'm here to do. I'm here to be the guy shilling for you. Jesus Christ. That's, <laughs> that's, my, whole, that's my whole repertoire. I want to ask you both a question, though, because this is sort of the theme of the evening. And for those of you who are participating here, this wasn't just a cool idea to have Nash and Steven on a Zoom call drinking cocktails at 5 p.m. on a Monday. And that's a really fucking cool idea. But yeah. the, the point of it is there are these formative experiences that we have when we drink something. We, there's a reason brands want you to open their bottles for celebrations and Christmas and Thanksgiving because now you're forever linked to those memories and you link those memories with a very specific beverage. I want this to be the evening where everybody says, wow, that was really fun. And we were drinking Singani and we heard these great stories. And that was the motivation for this evening because that's the way that I feel when I drink Singani. I think of sitting in the Brandy Library with you, Stephen. I think of being at Magic Mike Premier with you, Nash, or in Vegas when we were drinking. And I have all these positive associations with the brand. So it sounds like the Team America story, to go back into that, was the formative Singani experience, right? Nash, would you say that that's when, like, everything came together? Yeah, that was the first time that I'd had it. And um, I'm just, like, you know, like you said, you know, I'm not, I'm not a, a spirit guy. But in essence, it's, 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 um, it's a wine. I mean, it's a, it's, right. a, it, it's a great product, you know, so... But the thing was, you know, and, and Stephen said to me, he says, you know, I mean, you, you, you're there with, 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 with Stephen. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of there with, the, you know, with the principal. So I'm not going to get in trouble the next day if I show up a little, a little haggard, <laughs> you know. Thank God, the, the, ne the next day my scene is, I basically, uh, Channing wakes up and I'm snoring, uh, in, in a bed next to him and they go downstairs but i went downstairs and laid on the couch and i wasn't in, in the next scene in the kitchen and i fell asleep but i mean i guess i was just sawing wood and um but I, because we stayed up late but there was absolutely no hangover like i woke up the next morning thinking like i was gonna i was gonna feel like death and i was just like oh okay like you can this is like because Stephen said, he says, dude, you, I said, you don't have to, like, just a couple ice cubes, just drink it. And we, I think we had, like, eight ounce glass, like, tumblers that we were drinking that night. I don't think we had, like, oh, yeah, any. Yeah, no, we were, yeah, yeah. We were professionals. Yeah. We were, we were pounding. <laughs> and, um, and we got, I mean, we, and the thing was, we, uh, neither of us ever got stupid. You know, we just, yeah. we, we just sat there. We had, we had our, we had our, Singati, we watched we we watched uh, the the classic film that we wanted to watch, and we called it a night. And we saw each other the next day. I thought we I, I thought we bonded. I mean, that's that's kind of how you know it was like that was our our bonding moment. Like I, you know, I I, I got my Singati uh, cherry popped, and and we, and I we we got to watch Team America. So it doesn't doesn't get much better than that. Oh, that's that's not a bad evening. Um, yeah. Yeah, for sure. That was that was a big that was a great friend moment that I shared with Kevin. Of course, uh, I have Singani moments of you know five times a week um, because that's that's my go to. But that that was um, that yeah that was definitely one of those things that that uh, get carved somehow into your into your memory bank and but that was you know looking back making xxl um that was a great i was just really happy that we were able to put you know that band back together and and do that again because that was one of the real satisfactions of doing the oceans movies was seeing your friends again um, right. and, it, and it made me realize why people sometimes do TV series that last, you know, for a while. There, it really was great to see everybody again and go back to work again and, and have fun. Um, and so that of, of XXL, you know, us watching Team America, that's one of the like handful of moments that I take from that entire experience because it really was 
when people see it on screen and think, wow, they look like they're really friends, like it was a great group of people. Yeah, it really was. Really who, was. Who else drank the Singani besides the two of you? Did any did anybody else gravitate towards it in the same, you know, passionate way? Whether it was uh, Channing or Joe or you know, Matt. well, Joe you know, if they if, if if they did, I wasn't really tracking that because, like I said, I didn't want to be that guy. Um, I they, I think they bailed on us. I think everybody kind of bailed. You know? Oh no, everybody, yeah, everybody totally bailed on us that night. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But you have to remember, I think this was right around the time that Channing. If I'm not mistaken, this was right around the time that Channing had gotten involved with foreign and bred vodka. Yes. And so clearly that sets up a sort of, you know, jousting match uh, of sorts. And just, uh, who knows where that's going to go. But um, it's funny because we, I remember having, I, I feel like I remember having conversations with him around that time of the process of bringing uh, a brand to the market and and how how that works and what i'd learned you know in in trying to do it um as you know david it's really really hard it's really hard bringing a brand to market i don't care how good it is or how much money you have behind you or or if cats like it um it's 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 so competitive it's really competitive let me ask you a quick question about that, because obviously your first formative experience was in Bolivia while filming Che. So talk about like the first time that you try it and where that passion starts. Well, you know, it's, it's, again, it's one of those moments for me, a defining moment, literally. Um, and I, and I've, I've talked about this, that, that it was given to me as a gift at the startup party for Che. And the person who gave it to me said later, um, I didn't know what to get you. I, I was going to get you a t-shirt. And then at the last minute, I thought, no, you know, I, I want to get him a bottle of Singani. It's, it means it has, you know, sort of weight to it because it is the national spirit of Bolivia and it's, and it's specific to Bolivia. It had never been outside of Bolivia. So when I think of how easily I could have gotten a t-shirt instead of being given the Singani. Um, that's, that's amazing. Like how your life, I had no idea that I was experiencing literally a fork in the road when somebody, you know, was offering me this to drink. Um, and then based on what I liked to drink, this seemed to really, be uh, a better version of everything. I was a vodka drinker. I drank vodka straight on the rocks. Um, this had a great sort of bouquet about it. Really interesting on the palate, complicated, soft, and then like no second burn when you swallowed it. And I, I was, I, I'm, I'm telling you, like my first two sips, I was going, what is this? Like, what is this? Like, we were prepping for this tonight. My wife was sitting next to me and I was going over just sort of the spiel with her and the flow of this. And we were drinking these cocktails. And like 10 minutes in, she just looks at me and goes, yeah, this is, this is great. Because it's not just the flavor. It's like the feeling. It's everything about it, right? Yeah, look, that was, that was at the time in 2007, as I said, it had never been outside of Bolivia. So my initial, you know, response was to, you know, keep myself supplied for the next six months while we were shooting the movie. But then by the end of that, there was some discussion about why not bring this to the States? You know, there were enough people working on the film that had tried it at that point, And they all were supporting this idea of like, why don't you import this? And of course, not knowing anything about that, I said, sure. So <laughs> I want to bring it back over to Nash real fast. Yeah. Lots of questions about training for Magic Mike. And what does it feel like after you've been training that long to get to cut loose and not have to worry about what you eat and you can drink again? What is the emotional like 
Is it just like, you know, waiting and waiting and waiting and then just huge reward? What does that feel like? Actually, when I, when, when I got through the first day, I went to Whole Foods and I bought a, a bottle of Camus Reserve and I put it on my counter in my, uh, in, in my room. We were staying at the, uh, the Andas in uh, Savannah and I put a, a bottle of the Camus Reserve on my, and I remember Admiral Rodriguez came in and he goes, dude, like, why, why would you do that? Why would you torture yourself? I said, anybody can, can have discipline if you're in jail. Like, you know, I said, I, I want to look at that every day, <laughs> you know? And the minute I finished my dance routine, uh, I, I went right to my trailer, opened that bottle and, 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 and drank a glass of wine. Because, I mean, to me, it was like, you know, I'm disciplined. I'm a disciplined human being. But at the same time, I mean, you know, Pavlovian, I mean, I, I wanted that operative conditioning knowing that the minute that this was, you know, are we done? I'm clear? Good. I'm going to have me some wine. And then, but we had like a small little, like, feast. Uh, I think it was called the Pink House or something like that that we went to. And, yeah, you know, the people were eating fried chicken and, like, uh, even the bodybuilding shows I did when I was young, it was just like, I, I see these guys and they pig out and it's just like, I, I'm just not that person, you know? And then when, when, when we had Sagatti that night, it was, it was it, like, like he said, it, when, when Steven had it the first time, it was like, he'd never, it is, it's very complex. I cannot drink vodka on the rocks. I mean, I, I might as well just be drinking rubbing alcohol. I mean, it's just, it, it doesn't have a, it's not pleasant. You know, if I was to drink vodka, I drink it on diet soda with a lime. I mean, I have to have a coverage to that. It's just, it's nothing that, you know, there's no complexity to it. It's just, ugh. But I drank this for the first time and I was just like, wow. People and, don't talk you know, about that enough. And you know what? It's illegal, I think, to talk about it if you are an alcohol brand. I don't. Yes. I have yeah, to double you check. Cannot, you, cannot, you cannot ever discuss in an ad. Um, or, or as part of your like platform, you know, Hey, if you, if you drink this stuff on the rocks, uh, tomorrow you're going to be fine. Like you can't say that first of all, cause you can't prove it. And, and you know, do I have some anecdotal evidence of that? I do. Is that a, a scientific study? No, it's not. Um, but when you, when you consider what it is and how it's made, you know, that makes sense. You know, this is a, you've got this single varietal of grape that's grown and distilled at this really high altitude that has a lower boiling point. It's distilled twice. It's made into a wine before it's distilled, like it's rested using water from the region. There are a lot of things pointing to its purity. And, and what gets you hung over is sugar and impurities, like a, a, a spirit that's just not very well made. And so, you know, it makes sense that if you had some of this on the rocks, the next day you wouldn't be punished. But I found, uh, you know, that it was uniquely um, uh, absent the next day. And, the and, and so did a lot of people on the crew. That's how I got all these people hooked on it. <laughs> the anecdotal evidence that I can that I can say from us together was the event where you and I put on uh, at the at the Alamo Draft House, where we showed Aaron Brockovich, and then yes. we had the the Q and A afterwards. And irresponsibly, you and I drank an entire bottle of Singani during the filming of Aaron Brockovich, and then had to stand in front of a theater of people and do Q and A and I don't, I don't know how I got through that, but the only reason that I was able to, I think was because it, it didn't, it didn't uh, inebriate me. It only, it only invigorated me. I was clear headed, clear minded, despite the fact that I had ingested at least 375 milliliters of, uh, of, of clear alcohol. That was um, a fun night. That was really fun. That was an amazing, I had forgotten about that until Cecilia brought that up when we were prepping for this. Well, which, uh, you know, which apropos of like tell, talking about how brands are sold and how they're framed for the public, you know, fun. I'm always baffled when I see these campaigns for brands that are like really serious. 
and and happy because I feel like the whole point is to have fun. That's why you're together with other people. That's why you're doing it, and that's why the voice of of Singani sixty three there he is um, is is trying to be fun. Like is trying to be sort of you know cheeky and and lighthearted because wow he is so bored um that that the connection and having fun with people i thought was the whole point of of spirits i want to get to some q a because there's a lot of people yeah, yeah. that have joined into the happy hour and they want to ask questions we have everybody on mute just for the sake of brevity and the fact that we're recording this but if you want to ask a question there's the q a or you can put it into the chat and I will read them out. And I've taken some um, questions in advance as well. And I want to read those right now. First question from my pal, Julie Mossy, who lives down the street from me here in LA. Where did you get the amazing Sergeant Pepper outfit, Stephen? Okay, so I'm going to do this. I'll try and do this quickly, but there's a good uh, tag on the end of it. Um, I have, I have, if you, if you give me the right sort of mustache and, and little soul patch and uh, sideburns, uh, a fairly strong resemblance to Ringo Starr. So I asked Jeffrey Curland, who was our costume designer on the Oceans, on Oceans 11, to make Ringo's outfit for me for Halloween. Um, Jeffrey being Jeffrey, this thing, th th this, this is so, like, you could put a lens two inches from this thing. Like, the, the craftsmanship is just completely bananas. It is an exact, perfect replica. It's, it's made out of silk. It's wearing, I feel like a superhero when I'm wearing it. It's fantastic. So, I take it, I'm, I'm invited to this large Halloween party. And I'm wearing this, and at a certain point, I'm at the bar of this Halloween party, and George Clooney pulls up next to me to order a drink. George is dressed in a, 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 a L.A. chips, full-on chips uh, motorcycle cop outfit, like to, uh, as detailed and perfect as this is. Like he is full, like perfect. And he looks, he's got to look for that. Like it's, you know, but I know it's George. Now I'm wearing a mustache and sideburns and a soul patch. And I look over to George and he looks at me and he goes, that's a good outfit. Like he doesn't know who I am. He just goes, that's a good <laughs> outfit. And I turn and I look at him and I go, you don't know who I am, do you? And he looks at me for like five seconds and he goes, oh my he like loses it he's like that's the craziest thing ever so it was that talk about a moment that was a fun moment that's an amazing moment thank you for sharing that with us great question julie for getting that out next question for kevin nash how long do you have to prepare for a film like magic mike in terms of conditioning and what do you have to eat and what do you have to do to get into film shape for a movie like that Jeez, I, th I think I was like 55 when we shot the second one. So, I mean, you know, the rest of the guys are in their 30s. So, um, I started 16 weeks before we shot. And the first thing I did was I, I, I stopped alcohol. And then I stopped anything processed. And then I just started cutting my carbs and then started increasing my cardio. I went from, I was probably three... 325 330 to down to about probably the, the first day i got there was probably maybe 297. Wow. so i lost like 30 pounds oh Next, that's, all right. that's a that's a backstreet boy like that's it's a lot <laughs> yeah it's a, but i mean at the same time you know i mean when you when you when you i mean you're asked to uh, that's the sacrifice of a of, of film i mean i'm, I'm not going to show up anything less than the best I can. So I knew those guys were, I mean, you know, I knew, I knew Joe wasn't uh, eating cake, so. Oh, oh man, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, honestly, watching what these guys went through uh, was 
I, I felt so bad for them. They would, at the most, I remember watching Adam eat like a rolled up piece of turkey that he dipped in like mustard and then put a piece of lettuce around it. And that was lunch, like one, one. And that was his lunch. I was like, oh, no, they were, it's torture. It's really torture. Like they, these guys were so rigorous about it. And now to be fair, if I thought I would have to appear in front of a camera with my shirt off, uh, you can believe that I would do whatever, what, like surgery, anything, like anything. Like, so I understand the motivation because that's, that's intense. Like everybody's going to see you. But I never get this question about how I got in condition before making that <laughs> The, the thing that amazed the thing that amazed me was uh, on Magic Mike One because I've always been a, a fan of Steven's work, and we, we the first scene we shoot uh, that I was involved in was the hurricane party, oh, and oh, um, yeah. so the, he you know they set the they, they set the track and uh, you know they they, they 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 put the camera on, and. I've, you know, it's in my mind, because I've never worked with Steve before, it's just like all of a sudden, it's just like, okay, everybody's, you know, in their positioning, and then, then he gets behind the lens. And, you know, I, I didn't want to be that guy, but as soon as he got, we, and, and I don't remember the shot, Stephen, but you you basically had it, the the track kind of like on a on an L, and you, you, you pulled back from... Uh, Joe jumping on the couch right, right. To, McC to McConaughey's to McConaughey's pickup, right. and then you, you you took it all the way around, and then you had another red that was stationary that picked up McConaughey's movement with the two shot with him and Channing right there, right. you know. And the thing is, like you know, and so it's at, it's six foot ten. My my chances of, of being a an actor always going to be a lot more limited than if I, I learned something about the directorial. So I just sit there and I said, I said, number one, I said, I'm amazed that you're shooting this. He goes, by the time I tell somebody else what I want, I'm on to the next shot. I said, that makes complete sense. I said, what one thing would you give a filmmaker advice, uh, you know, if, if they were going to make a film? And he said, when the lighting truck comes, go and put a padlock on it. And I said, okay. <laughs> and to this day, when I go on another set and I work and I watch these people set up for an hour, you know, they're trying to beat the sun and set this up and maybe a 5K in this crowd. Ah. Next thing you know, it's like, you know, break. Like we're not going to get the shot. And I'm thinking, well, Steve would have got the shot. <laughs> But uh, we had what a compliment! Had, what a compliment! Uh, just, I, it's hard. It's, it's very hard to work with anybody after him. When, when you get on the set the first terrible. day, that's when you terrible. get on, when you get on the set the first day and it's like seven pages, you're like nobody's going to cover seven pages. No, we're going to cover seven pages. We're starting at twelve. We're going to walk off. We're going to walk off and get in the vans at five thirty. <laughs> So I was like, all right, I've been spoiled. Well, look, it helps. It helps when everybody in front of the camera knows exactly what they're doing. That's the only way I can move that fast is if you guys know what you're doing. You know what right. I mean? Because I'm not going to leave until we have what I need. Believe me, I like to move fast, but I'll grind it like... If, I, if I'm not getting what I need to put it together the way I think it should be put together, then, then we're there a lot later than that. But the bottom line is, you know, I make sure that I work with people that are, are on point. And so we can all, you know, we're all just pushing that ball downfield at the same rate. And that's, you know, don't make it harder than it needs to be. Right. So I've got a film film question. Two two questions asking about Contagion. 
because Steven's film became super relevant again this year for, for no apparent reason. Um, the filming of Contagion. If Singani 63 had existed during that film, would it have been the number one therapeutic instead of Forsythia? That's oh, the first with, question. Yeah, without question. Yeah, it's, it's, it was my, you know, laziness in, in the whole process of becoming the importer uh, that kept me from using Singani as the obvious cure for the MEV virus. But, um, you know, look, uh, these things, uh, as, as Kevin will tell you uh, on set, I don't force things. I'm, 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 go I'm, I'm sort of leaning into it but I'm not forcing it. I'm trying to key off, you know, what's happening in front of me. And um, that process, like anytime you deal with the government, as you know, like when you're dealing with the government, like things just take a long time. Yeah. It was from the point that I made the deal with Casa Real, who's the producer in Bolivia, um, to be, to, to, for me to become the importer and then me applying for the importer's license, that process took forever. I would get random calls every like nine months from somebody in the government going, are you Steven Soderbergh? Do you, like they were trying to figure out, like, am I legit? Is this a front? Is it, oh, uh, and they would, they, we'd have this brief conversation, they'd hang up. Another nine months would go by, another phone call would happen. Like it was totally crazy. And so, you know, that's why, that's why it wasn't the cure. On a side note, I think when this is done, we should we should film a video where I contract COVID and I'm dying in bed and then somebody gives me this and then I just shoot out of oh, bed oh, with yeah, like a huge yeah. smile that's, on my uh, face and then I That's just I clean as, the house. As my, friend, as my friend Matthew McConaughey would say, that's just green lights. <laughs> All right, now oh, next question. Next question for you from my friend Liz in Modesto, California who also wants to know if you can say a shout out to her baby, Ilana. Um, Nash, if you were in a Marvel movie or, I'm sorry, if you were in a Marvel movie, which superhero or villain would you want to be? Uh, let me think. I, I would want to be the Red Skull. I'm going with the Red Skull. That's it. That's all I got. I don't know who, who the Red Skull is. Who is the Red Skull? I'm completely it's, it's, ignorant. It's, it's, it's Captain America's nemesis. He's. You'd have to. I'm an old school Marvel guy. I read comics back in the early 60s. But uh, who, who am I giving a shout out to? Baby Alana. Baby Alana. Baby Alana. Hello. This is Kevin Nash. I'll give you a shout out. Stay healthy, my love. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you. There All you right. go. Steve, Steve, she use that for the rest of her life. <laughs> well, to be to to be to be fair and to not make light of this, Nash, when my nephew has a rare bone disease, was in the hospital with a hip replacement at ten. Nash FaceTimed him in the hospital to make oh, him feel better. Great. So this is, the, the, you, we, we can joke about this, but the guy is legit heart for this stuff. So oh, don't get, absolutely. Don't get cute you're, over there, Stephen. Easy, you'll kill me. <laughs> you kill my you kill my gimmick. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, next question from Matt Brockmeyer in the Bay Area, one of my best customers and good friends. Stephen, how are you drinking your Singani tonight? Oh, obviously on the rocks. I've got a. Thanks for reminding me. I've got a bowl of ice right here. Um, and a bottle. So yeah, on the rocks. Um, I feel like that's. That's a really good test of a spirit, as as Kevin was saying. Like, can it? Can you take it? You know, when it's naked. Um, so that's that's my go-to. It's just it's always worked. Um, how many? I can't even calculate how many cocktails that I've had that people have created with. Singani in it. It's got it by now, you know, in January, it'll be seven years that we've been in the market. So we, I've, it's got to be over a thousand, literally. Um, this, this is still my kind of, you know, reset 
uh, Rosetta Stone and uh, it works. All right, next question for Nash. If Steven Soderberg is Ringo tonight, which Beatle are you? I, I, I want to be John Lennon then. If I get to pick one. You do get to pick yeah, one. Yeah, you can pick whichever one you want. <laughs> and and I mean, imagine, I mean, if, imagine if he was 6'7", what that would have been like. Wow. That would have been intense. Uh, you know, it's, it's a, and we live in a world in which people create what if scenarios what if john lennon was six seven but nash is six ten what if john lennon was well, six, it, that, well that's so just then it just got way better because i was thinking six seven was was at the edge of comprehension six ten wow god you know Next it's because i'm so tall it's because i'm six five so yeah. that's why. That's right. Yeah, it's, 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 it's hard to get that perspective. <laughs> Next question for Stephen from my buddy Anil up in the Bay. Uh, how did you come up with the idea for Singani? And what do you think was the hardest part about pulling off getting this done from Bolivia to the United States? Well, the best news is that I, the creation of, I have nothing to do with the creation of Singani, which is why I like talking about it. Um, you know, it's been around from what we know for almost 500 years. Um, it's it, the industrialized version of it began about a hundred years ago. Um, and the family that, um, controls Casa Real was, was directly connected to that initial, uh, move to turn it from something that was made uh, in a sort of ad hoc basis by a lot of different people and sold at market into like a, a real business in which there was a facility with distillation like and it became a um a real a formalized product um so one of the things that's fun about it is that i get to tell somebody else's story like it's not my story and and i'm very proud of my association with it but um all i did was create the 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 label the new label you know when we when we were bringing it over here everything else about it already existed nash this is from sarah soderberg whoever that is um <laughs> probably okay this is a hack this is obviously a hack nash <laughs> If Steven Soderbergh were a wrestler, what would his name be? <laughs> mm, slasher Steven Soderbergh, I don't know. <laughs> no, you know, that actually makes total sense. That makes total sense to me. Because that's how, that's how I feel I uh, approach the staging of a scene like I'm not I don't want to see it until I've, I'm t I don't want to look at it until I'm there and everybody's there we're in the location that we're going to shoot it and we have the actors in their outfits and then once that's there and we start to figure out how to block it I feel like it's very much uh it's it's I'm slashing I'm not I'm not a, a pointillist uh, you know what I mean I want I want it to right. be I want it to be precise but I also want it to be sort of uh, instinctual. So that makes total sense. Thank you, Kevin. I'm gonna follow up to that question and say, Nash, if Steven is slasher Steven Soderbergh, what is his finisher? Is it a submission? Is it a power move? Is it an off the top rope move? What type of move is Steven's finisher? Probably a Singati sidewalk slam. Oh, that sounds good. That is that like against the ropes first, then a catch, and then down to the mat, or is that just a pickup and a slam? I think it's a, it's it's a combination of a of a of a spine buster with a tuck of the head at the end where you kind of ro rotate the guy. So it's a high impact, high impact, no kickouts. It's no kickouts in that. No, 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 no kickouts. Wow. Okay. All right. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna start working on that. <laughs> Next, I'll, I'm going to text you a video of what that looks like later. 
Uh, Steven, if Thackeray had some Singani 63 while he was operating on himself on the Nick, would there have been a season three? Oh, yeah, without question. That's what's so, that's what's so frustrating about that is that Singani did exist uh, at that time. It just, you know, John Thackeray had no access to it. The whole trajectory of that storyline, obviously, would have trended in a more positive direction if John Thackeray had had Singani. But, you know, he went the sort of, he went a different route and uh, you saw what happened. I, I, I think, I, I think it's uh, not a good sign when anybody you meet tells you that they're gonna perform an operation on themselves. I just think that's, uh, that's a red flag. All right, Nash, next question. I'm gonna ask this on behalf of my friend, Ben Jensen in Modesto, California. Nash, um, who is the best professional wrestler to drink with and why? Uh, probably, I would say, well, Scott Hall was, was my, my running mate, but uh, Austin, Austin is a, is, is, is a he, he can switch up. Austin can go start with scotch, have dinner, go red wine, switch to martinis. I mean, he can, he can, I, I, I like that. I have a, I have a question. Now, if Singani was, was around during the Bossa Nova age, would we ever have gotten out of it? Wow, that is a good question. Because doesn't it have a Bossa Nova kind of feel? Absolutely, absolutely. Well, I guess, okay. So the challenge would be, the challenge on us is to make Bossa Nova, again, the sort of primary uh, go-to for people musically. Like we create a campaign in which Bossa, Bossa Nova music becomes the, uh, a sort of primary cultural force. Then oh. we, we put Singani <laughs> on top of that. Right. And then we see if it ever goes away. So we can do that, right? Okay, I'm, I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna put this on record since I know we're recording this and I've, I've talked about this with both of you individually, but I want it on the record in video. Steven, when can you direct a remake of Roadhouse with Channing Tatum playing Patrick Swayze's character and Kevin Nash playing Sam Elliott's character? Well, so you're just when saying- When can we expect that? You're just when saying when. When can we when. expect that movie? Yeah, yeah, okay. when. Not, not before, not before 2022. It will not be before that. that that's, and then that. to Nash, if Steven directs a remake of Roadhouse, are you willing to play Wade Garrett and grow your hair back out again? I'll start growing my hair now. I don't have any more questions. Does anybody have anything that they want to add to the discussion? Well, what is your, I do have a question. So what is okay. your cat's name? That cat's name is Tommy. I rescued him out of a tree this summer when oh. uh, we opened the sliding glass door and we heard him screaming across the street. I was living on Chandler Boulevard in, in Sherman Oaks at the time. And there's a bunch of trees that run down the middle of the road and he was stuck in a tree. It took me five hours to get him out. I got him out with a pool net with smoked salmon taped around the rim of the pool net while standing on a 10 foot ladder. Well, I've always liked you. Now I like you even more. Well, thank you. That's a very, that's that's a very nice that compliment. Is, a, that is a, as a, you know, as a, you know, very publicly out cat person. That's an amazing story. So it, it's, it looks like it's really working if you ask me. He sleeps with me every night. He won't leave me. He won't leave my side. He he very much knows who got him out of that tree and you know where he is. So That's he's awesome. a very sweet cat. Uh, any final questions for you? Any final comments about Singani or drinking or drinking Singani? Um, Kevin, I, I I don't ha I, I I don't drink till later in the night because I stay up till four. <laughs> It is the truth. I don't. I don't know why. I, I, I'm sure because I got out of the ring every night at midnight and then drove 300 miles. But 
I'm going to go downstairs and, and, and open a bottle and I'm going to have me a drink. That's what I'm going to do. Awesome. So. Well, I want to thank everybody for joining in tonight, for getting a bottle of Singani and for participating with us. Um, oh, I want to add that Dave Smith, who's the distiller from St. George, big fan, says that your Singani is beautiful booze and he thanks you for sharing it with us. That's from one of the best distillers in our industry oh, that's here so watching nice. tonight. That's so um, nice. Thank you for that, Dave. Compliments everywhere. Everybody's saying they need new bottles. They want more. So uh, we'll wrap it at that. Kevin, thank you so much for making yourself available to do this with us oh, as well. Thanks. Anytime. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. Uh, all I'm right. Just, we'll wrap it there. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm kind of I'm kind of pissed because I think if we would have said what Beetle I would have wanted to be, and you would have said, I would have said John Lennon, I would have had like maybe round glasses on and had a Sergeant Pepper's outfit on. I think that, I think I got hoodwinked in not knowing the importance of, of the Ringo star, George yeah. Clooney. I, yeah. I'm, still, I, I'm still stuck on the George Clooney in the, in the chips outfit. Well, well, like I said, it wo it worked. Totally worked. <laughs> How could it not? All right, guys, well, thank you again. You guys. I can't yeah. wait to see you in person. Likewise. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great to see both of you Great again. Great to see you, well, Stephen. Great to see you, Dave. Thanks, David. Bye, Kevin. Thanks, my friend. Bye, Stephen.